<laughs> so we recognize that a large amount of distrust still exists in the community, particularly with regards to large academic medical centers like our own. And it's important to try to bridge that gap by having uh, individuals in the community who can relate to the academic medical centers, uh, who can bring the concerns of the, of, the, of the community into our research. Uh, they have to be treated with respect, they have to be given a proper place at the table, and we have to, they have to feel that the concerns of the community really are embraced equally by our efforts to do community-based participatory research. Uh, and so we found out that uh, when we were trying to engage in more uh, research, uh, we had much greater buy-in. Uh, when, first of all, the efforts weren't being led by our, community, our, our clinical tr uh, translational science uh, uh, staff, but they were led by our public health staff uh, who understood clinical translational research. Uh, when we had that effort, when we had community members who were part of the uh, research team, who were part of the IRB, all of a sudden there was this phenomenal embrace uh, they were much more likely to go back and say, you have to do this study, and it's important that we understand prostate cancer in the African-American community. It's so important to understand uh, diabetes management in our Latino community. It was coming from the community. And so uh, we, uh, we have appreciated that. We've made that an integral part of how we participate um, in this type of research. Uh, and that is, is, in essence, why you have to have community members involved in community-based participatory research, uh, not just as volunteers, but as truly active members who are valued, who are funded, uh, who, who are resourced in order to, to compensate for the time they spent in this incredible effort.